Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green combo deck featuring four copies of Over the Top as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 7-mana rare sorcery says each player reveals a number of cards from the top of their library equal to the number of non-land permanents they control, puts all permanent cards revealed this way onto the battlefield and the rest into their graveyard. So Over the Top incentivizes us to play as many permanents in our deck as possible, ideally permanents that when they enter the battlefield can also generate additional permanence in the form of tokens usually, so cards that generate treasure tokens or creature tokens will also set up a more powerful over the top. And outside of the 7 mana sorcery, every card in our deck is a permanent, so we're much more likely to have an effective over the top than the opponent, so that's one way to break the symmetry of this card. Another way to break the symmetry is by just killing the opponent on the spot, thanks to our 4 copies of a Devilish Valet, a 3 mana 1-3 with Trample and Haste, and Alliance says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can double the valet's power until end of turn. So if we already had a valet in play before casting over the top, or if we find one alongside a few creature tokens, then we can often one-hit K with the opponent, only takes four or five triggers with valet to get to a lethal number. And we can even combine it with Stimulus Package, which is also quite nice alongside it. A 4-mana enchantment that when it enters a battlefield creates two treasure tokens. And we can sacrifice a treasure at any point to create a 1-1 green and white citizen creature token. So now we can potentially turn all our treasures into 1-1s at instant speed to double the valet's power until it's lethal. And we've got a ton of ways to generate treasures in this deck. One of the main ones is with Gala Greeters, 2-mana 1-1 with Alliance, this time saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can choose one of the three modes that hasn't been chosen yet this turn between putting a plus one counter on it, creating a tapped treasure token and gaining two life. And the fun part about Stimulus Package is that we can even sacrifice tapped treasure tokens to it. So it doesn't matter that the tokens from Greeters come into play tapped, we can still sacrifice them to generate 1-1 one -one tokens. And that's also a great way to trigger Gala Greeters during the opponent's turn, since we can just sacrifice a treasure, make a 1-1, one -one, and then Greeters will trigger, potentially replacing the treasure with another tapped treasure, and we can also potentially get extra counters or life gain if needed. So Gala Greeters plus Package is another amazing combo, and the more greeters the better and that's also an awesome way to increase our permanent count to set up a lethal over the top so making a bunch of one ones while they may not be able to attack will still improve our chances to set up the kill with our seven mana sorcery and then we also have two copies of the new Bitter Reunion. In case we don't find Valet, this can potentially still help set up a one-hit KO, because when it enters a battlefield we can discard a card if we do draw two cards. It's also helpful in the early game to kind of sculpt our hands, maybe discard an excessive copy of Over the Top, which we typically don't need. And for one mana we can sacrifice Reunion, and then creatures we control gain haste until end of turn. So if we find Reunion off Over the Top, or if we already had one in play, we'll often have a mana left over by putting a land on on the battlefield untapped or maybe making a treasure token and then we can sacrifice reunion team has haste including potential tovalar's hunt masters which can then kill the opponent and hunt master another great curve topper to ramp into with our various treasure tokens when it enters we'll make a pair of 2-2 wolf tokens so hunt master by itself can fully enable gala greeters and then hunt master can also be an awesome way to increase our permanent count for over the top to cast it on the following turn and if it ever switches to night time and we get to pack leader going that's a ton of fun as well and then Huntmaster, a great combo with the Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which is another important piece of the puzzle here. Great in any red deck, can make a Shaman token, which can make treasures when it attacks, also increasing our mana and permanent count. And on the second chapter, we can discard and draw to once again improve our hand, try and find a single copy of Over the Top. And eventually, the Reflection of Kiki Jiki can copy our permanents, like maybe a Jewel Thief, a 3 3 with Vigilance and Trample, when it enters, creates a treasure token. So, kind of another 2 for 1 in terms of permanence and of course a great with the hunt master as well which can also be quite good alongside devilish valet as we can double its power three times and then at two mana there's a full set of courier's briefcase an artifact treasure so having that treasure subtype means it can be sacrificed to a stimulus package later in the game and when it enters it also makes a 1-1 citizen token probably won't be sacrificing it very often to draw three cards unless we have enough treasures to enable it 
And then we also have the full set of The Elder Dragon War at 4 mana, another permanent as a saga, with a read ahead mechanic, so we can start from any chapter. The first one very useful against creature decks, dealing 2 damage to each creature and each opponent. Chapter 2 lets us discard any number of cards and then draw that many, so that can further help Sculptor Hand to set up our combo, and eventually makes a 4-4 Dragon Token. And I think that covers everything, the mana base, only 22 lands since we're making so many treasure tokens along the way, and we don't want to find a ton of lands with over the top, much better to find more permanents instead. But we do also have Crucible, which can maybe make two 1-1s one at instant speed, also great alongside the Devilish Valley, and then Boseju can also blow up opposing artifacts or enchantments, otherwise just some basic lands, and a bunch of the dual lands, including the Highlands to also gain one life, even though it does enter the battlefield tapped. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Gala greeters into Fable, maybe. Opponent on a white soldier's deck. So hopefully they don't have too much removal. And we can still provide some blockers here to discourage any attacks. Turn to Guardian, also quite good. So let's hope the Greeters doesn't get exiled by a Brutal Cathar. If it does, I might have to play Jewel Thief over Fable to have a slightly larger blocker. And then Fable can maybe discard Briefcase to look for our uh, over-the-top and other various combo pieces. Veteran also enabling a nice attack here. Okay, so we're down to 12. And uh, do I go for Fable or Jewel Thief? Yeah, I think Jewel Thief makes sense. Just a slightly better blocker here. And then once we feel like we're stable enough, we can get to Fable going. Can also start gaining life with the Gala Greeters. Which will buy us more time. Thalia will make Fable one more expensive. And Guardian can still attack. Tapping the Veteran to hit for 5. I'll trade for Officer here. And then we could hang on to Crucible. But uh, now Stimulus Package is quite tempting. Even though this taxed by Thalia. Can still play it. And then enable Gala Greeters in our turn, and again in the opponent's turn. So we'll do this now. Make a treasure. Could have even played Jewel Thief if I wanted to, but uh, we'll try it this way. Alright, there's a Brutal Cathar at long last. Going after Gala Greeters. So on the way out, make at least another token, potentially gain two as well. Yeah, let's gain two life. Can still make two one ones at instant speed. And then I'll just trump Guardian here, I think. So down to six we go. Another Fable. Yeah, I think Fable plus Jewel Thief is probably the move here. Since I really need to start finding uh, more Curve Toppers with the uh, second chapter. Can make another token with a treasure from Thief. So we've got a decent board, but it's not gonna be able to keep up with the opponent's soldiers for long. Especially with another veteran to pump the team. 
and a survivor, that's fine. Okay, let's see if the Brule Cathar attacks as well. That one might stay back. So Thalia pulls Guardian. Guardian gets to Scry once again. I could force a discard by double blocking. Although next turn I'm pretty likely dead to an all-out attack. So what's my best hope here? Fable, discard two, draw two. Yeah, even with an over-the-top, I wouldn't necessarily be able to cast it due to Thalia. What if I try and kill Thalia here? I still need to chump Guardian. And if I lose all my permanents, then over the top is also not going to do much. If I find the uh, four mana saga to deal two damage with double veteran, that's not enough. So my best bet might be finding Tovalar's Huntmaster to present a bunch of blockers. So in that case, I think I still just chump Guardian. Fall to two. And then discards briefcase plus fable. Keep the land to maybe cast a Huntmaster or an over the top. Alright, there's the Elder Dragon War. Although, as we've said, not quite as effective now with Valiant Veteran times two. If I play Thief. Then I can still play Dragon War afterwards, so I think that's probably the play. I'll have five blockers, I guess her opponent can just attack with all and kill me. Whereas now I can still make two tokens, have six blockers to six attackers and survive. So I think that means I just have to pass. No point in attacking with the Shaman, even though it will make a replacement treasure for package. Just gets eaten. Maybe if they didn't have first strike, I could have tried to like attack and then set up Elder Dragon War. I'll lay down arms, exiles the shaman. Well, let's hope they don't go all in here. Just three creatures attacking. So I can double block Survivor, Chump Guardian, go to one. And then still potentially be in a position to cast an over the top. Could also double block Thalia, which I guess is just better at that point. That way we can cast a seven mana over the top. Alright, big draw step coming up. Another Elder Dragon War. Do I have the mana to cast both? Four plus four, I do. So that will wipe the board except for Guardian, which will stay in play. Yeah, that's an issue. And then I'm not going to have a blocker left to uh, block the Guardian. Because I'll be out of treasures for Stimulus Package. So is there another way around this? If I discard draw... I don't think there's anything I can realistically hope to find. Maybe another uh, copy of Gala Greeters, would that do it? So let's say we Elder Dragon War, find a Gala Greeters, play it, make a token, make another token, make a treasure, gain two life. That might be a way to survive. Although I guess we will also get back a Gala Greeters here from Brutal Cathar, so that can always chump Guardian. So maybe that's still my best move. And then I should start by attacking with Jewel Thief. Get in my 3 damage. So chapter 1. And chapter 1. Sadly, no treasures to keep going with the Gala Greeters, a debt to another Brutal Cathar, or lay down arms. Just gonna be a Shield of Argive. 
Okay, so go to Trump. And then we've got two chapters of Elder Dragon War coming up. And uh, Devilish Valley is not going to be good enough. Mountain can also go. All right, let's see if we can find a Tovalar Sundmaster here. We can. Okay. Well, we're still in this. By some miracle, Brutal Cathar is pretty brutal. Exiles Huntmaster. Although now if Guardian attacks, we can actually kill it with a wolf token. Although opponent probably doesn't care when they get a three one ones in return. So don't have much of a choice. Have to block block. Get two dragons here and a Gala Greeters. Sadly, is not going to make any treasure. So is this good enough to survive? Block shields, block Cathar, block a token and take two and die. So yeah, close one, but uh, Cathar of the top was what made the difference here. Otherwise the Gala Greeter's engine might have been able to take over. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hands just need a couple more lanes, and eventually find over the top to combo off, basically. Opponent black, green. Well, hopefully Gala Greeter survives, so we can combine it with Stimulus Package. Opponent with an undead butler. And uh, yeah, desperately need a third land here. Annoying Vermin, perfect answer to Gala Greeters if it were to die. And there's a land, perfect, so let's go for Fable over Valley for now. Will help us find a fourth land. And should I put a counter on Greeters or just make a treasure so we're also guaranteed for mana next turn? The Lurgoif a 3-4. Mills over Shieldred, and Vermin deals one damage. Okay, so feel like maybe one Elder Dragon War could go. Stimulus package, also not the best in multiples, admittedly, so maybe I just discard one of each and keep Huntmaster, even though it's the most expensive card. Lands are good, so how about we... Play Stimulus Package here. And then at least make one token, triggering Gala Greeters to make another treasure. And then I'll pass and potentially make more treasure in the opponent's turn. And then we're just an over the top away from potentially comboing off. Although Valet by itself with Stimulus Package plus Gala Greeters is quite good. And see a bit more from the opponent's deck. The uh, spider would be a great combo with a uh, gnawing vermin. I think I can afford to take four, even though I could jump if needed. And then we'll make another 1 1. Untap. Bitter reunion could also come in handy. So no shortage of options, even a Crucible to make two 1-1s one at instant speed could be nice. Didn't think I'm planning to wipe the board with Elder Dragon War. So how about I Bitter Reunion, discarding Elder Dragon War. And there's over the top, perfect. So play Valet. And then I could already attack here if I wanted to and potentially do significant damage with the Valet, but I think I'm gonna try and wait until next turn to truly combo off, potentially even copy Valet with a Reflection of Kiki-Jiki. Taxidermists 4-4, four, four. that's acceptable. And I want to preserve as many permanents as possible here. 
So end of turn, use package, make another treasure. And then untap. And uh, yeah, I think start by copying the Devilish Valley. That works. Can make a treasure. And let's go over the top. Got quite a few permanents. Opponent had the remorse, which they didn't use on the valet to begin with, but now they're mostly tapped out. Okay, that works. Still have the copy. Bunch of triggers on the stack. Opponent also found some good ones here with uh, old stick fingers and another Lurgoif. But uh, yeah, that's over the top for you. Can give the team haste by sacrificing a reunion as well. Valley up to 2000 power and uh, can play Hunt Master. That's three more triggers. Should have some treasures left even after attacking with uh, Goblin Shaman. We can make another treasure, sack it to package to make another 1 1. And I'm pretty sure we're over 9,000 damage here with just a valley. And then the rest of the team can still attack with Reunion potentially. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And we've got Gala Greeters plus package. Can discard one to the second chapter. So yeah, just need a third land and we're good. Opponent starting with a Cabaretti Courtyard. Gets a mountain, and there's Rockfall Vale. So we'll have to take one here. But hopefully Greeters can stick around for a bit. And can even discard two copies of Stimulus Package now, since we only really need one in play for it to be effective. Yeah, opponent could have reinforcements, not gonna risk it since Greeters quite valuable. Welcoming Vampire, okay, does point towards a token strategy. And double package will be discarded. Another Greeters. So I could play Greeters and still play Stimulus Package if the Shaman attacks. I think that's still worth it since the Greeters is just gonna go off pretty quickly here. So I'll start by attacking. Ponen may respect a burn spell too here. Play Greeters. Play package. Start making treasure. And can even sacrifice our tapped treasure tokens here. So in this case, maybe plus one counter, treasure. And I can make another one to get the full benefits from the first greeters. And this one can get a plus one counter, and then pass, do it again in the opponent's turn. And then next turn we can play our Huntmaster. They could have some instant speed removal for greeters, but have two treasures, so we'll still be able to activate them a few times. And then we're in a great position to top deck our seven mana over the top, and potentially kill the opponent out of nowhere. Greeters trigger, and we'll go for treasure. And then now maybe plus one counters and pass it back. Briefcase also technically a treasure that can be sacrificed to stimulus package. Don't think I'm playing around a board wipe here necessarily. And yeah, that's already just too much value for the opponent to deal with, and they concede. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. We've got some good early plays, and are over the top in hand already, up against blue-white soldiers. Okay, so finding our 
Elder Dragon War is probably going to be pretty important. Thalia is not what we wanted to see, but Gala Greeters, a nice turn to play now. Can play Jewel Thief on three, make some treasure, and then eventually find an Elder Dragon War to wipe the board. Sentinel. This one's also a soldier. Stick to the plan. Valiant Veteran to Pamphalia, so I'll trade Jewel Thief for Sentinel here. And a Guardian of New Banalia, the follow-up. Okay, so play Fable. Keep making treasure, I think. Could already try and cast an over the top next turn, but it's going to cost me all my treasures. So if we can hold out for a little bit longer, it's probably worth it. So take eight. And the Droxkull Infantry, 3-3. Three, three. Okay, so what to get rid of here? Probably just double Bitter Reunion. Another over the top, not super useful. So, yeah, I think I go for another Fable. Do I need to gain life with Gala Greeters is an interesting question. So... Can always block with the shaman tokens if necessary, although I would prefer not to. Next turn opponent can attack for 8, 9, 10, 11. But if I just jump veteran, I might be okay. Unless your opponent flashes in the reinforcements end of turn as their last card. So close call. I think I go for treasure. And then hope to uh, be able to cast uh, over the top next turn with a lot of permanence in play. Brutal Cathar can exile one token. And an all-out attack. Okay, so... I guess I can now block Veteran, and then I'll have to chump here to survive, but at least a Veteran dies. Probably the best we can do. And a stimulus package would have been nice with a Gala Greeters in play. Discard over the top, and then... Yeah, I don't think I'm interested in casting stimulus package here and waiting another turn. Find another over the top. So if I go for it now, I'll have to sack two treasures. Yeah, I think we have to go for it, since making two one ones is not good enough. So four permanents each. And we found Elder Dragon War. So that's pretty good. What else did we find? Looks like Double Valet and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Well, let's deal two damage to each creature. And then we want to make sure to deal two damage before making an extra Shaman. So that worked out. <laughs> and our opponent explodes. Yeah, I wonder how many valet triggers we would have gotten. I doubt it would have been enough for lethal, since yeah, we make one shaman, the valet is also trigger off each other. But yeah, would have been able to wipe the opponent's board, and even if they keep the Guardian of New Benalia alive by discarding their last card, we could have kept some blockers back. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Play a tapped Highlands turn 1, turn 2 maybe a Gala Greeters into Jewel Thief, start making treasure to hopefully combo off. Put in blue-white, so hopefully they're not packing too many counterspells and sweepers. And instead maybe a Soldier Tribal deck. Turn 2 Janna, alright, Angels. That works. Could put a counter on greeters to attack. I think I'm still more interested in just making a treasure. 
and then next turn briefcase and maybe the turn after we can already go for over the top. So could see some four mana angels already thanks to Jada tapping for white to cast angel spells. And just an inspiring overseer which will replace itself. And a stimulus package, excellent. So can even pay for spell peers should our opponent have it. And that will combo quite nicely with Gala Greeters. Opponent actually had the spell peers, funnily enough. Will set us back on some permanence, but no big deal. And then do I attack Jewel Thief into Overseer? Don't think my opponent's likely to take that trade, so sure. Opponent takes three damage. Then we want to use the package now. Make a treasure. And then I'll pass. Preserve as many treasures as possible. Not sure if I'm going for it next turn already, or if we maybe wait a turn to build up some more permanence. But uh, yeah, the fact that they're playing Spell Pierce also makes me more afraid of committing a 7 mana sorcery. So take 5. Jada tapping for mana once again. And a Steel Seraph. Also an Angel. Did not quite realize that, so it's pretty neat. And our opponent still has 2 mana for potential counter spells. So yeah, this is getting pretty sketchy if they have a couple counters in hand. I don't see it going well for us. Could gain two life here if I wanted to. Sure, since we'll still get a 1-1 in return, so a number of permanents stays the same. We'll just make it harder to cast over the top potentially. Jewel Thief is good, so... Yeah, we can play Jewel Thief, play Briefcase, build up our permanent count, and then hopefully go for it next turn. So we'll pass. No attacks this time. So cross our fingers that our opponent taps out. Steel Seraph can gain lifelink. So we're taking 10 in the air. Jada making more mana for Sarah Paragon. Keeping up two. So if they have negates, of course they just get to counter. If they have a make disappear, then we'll need four spare mana, which is going to be pretty tricky. So for now, use package, make a treasure. And then we need to count. So over the top, five, six, seven mana. Yeah, I can pay for another spell pierce, but I wouldn't be able to pay for a yeah, make disappear. Gaining a life here, probably not worth it, so I'll preserve my treasures. And there's a Devilish Valley. Can we maybe get there without over the top just by casting Valley and making a bunch of tokens? So if I play Valley, I have four treasures and I can make a fifth thanks to Gala Greeters. So play Valley, double once up to two, double twice up to four, double three times up to eight, four times sixteen, five times. 32. So unless your opponent has instant speed spot removal, which could also be the case, Valet would get there by itself. So what are we thinking? Counter spell or removal spell? Going for over the top admittedly is more fun, but it's not guaranteed to win. Now well, let's go for it anyway. This is why we play the deck after all. Okay, that resolved. There's Devilish Valley. So that's a lot of triggers. Haven't looked at the opponent's board yet, but I assume it's pretty good too. Have another valley in hand we can play. And we still have stimulus package plus a bunch of treasures. 
Ooh, opponent found a Celestial Regulator, so that can actually tap our Valet down. Disaster. Good thing we have another one. But will it be enough for lethal now is a question. It's a shame that all these triggers go to waste. But I think we might still be able to get there with all the treasures. Although, Pono could of course still have their original removal spell in hand. Valley resolves. And then, uh, yeah, I guess we'll move to combats and see what happens. We're definitely dead to the opponent attacking with all the flyers next turn. So best we can do is send the team sideways and hope there's no interaction. Surprisingly, our opponent did not draw with a Sanctuary Warden. Okay. Let's use Stimul's package a few times and hope for the best. Briefcase, also a treasure. In the meantime, the original valet up to a thousand power. So that one's definitely going to cross 9,000. So their opponent's got three cards in hand, two mana untapped, and they're making us go for it here. So it's going to be painful if they have a Fateful Absence or like a Soul Partition in hand. Yeah, this is a lethal valet, so I guess we go to damage and see what's up. And yeah, looks like her opponent has interaction. Slip out the back to phase it out. Yeah, that's game, I think. GG's. So close yet so far away. I guess since we're dying to the flyers next turn, I'll grow my original valet some more just to see how high we can go. If I wait until the opponent's turn, I can trigger Gala Greeters, but I don't think that's gonna make a huge difference here. All right, so yeah, opponent hitting the regulator and having instant speed removal is exactly what they needed here. But GG's. At least we get to see our over the top in action. And Blue White Angels could also be a fun new archetype with uh, Steel Seraph, a great new addition. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand's probably not going to cut it. Although I can play Briefcase into Fable. Yeah, maybe it's still okay, actually. On the play, getting a Fable going could pull us pretty far ahead. And then we've got Elder Dragon War as a catch-up mechanism. And then Stimulus Package. Could be nice if we find a Gala Greeter specifically. And then now we don't even need to use our briefcase, so that's even better. Attack for one. Play Fable. That resolves. Okay, another Valet. I think we probably discard two of them. And there's over the top. So a step one attack and then maybe play a Stimulus Package. So we're not overextending into a board wipe. Like Depopulate. And if they counter it, so be it. Could also go for Jewel Thief. And that one I care a bit less if it gets countered and doesn't waste my treasure. It's also reasonable. A bit weaker in the face of a Depopulate. 
But yeah, I imagine our opponent's probably holding some instants as well. Thirst for Discovery, maybe points towards a reanimator strategy instead. So, opponent just discarding Bankbuster and Teferi. So maybe not quite reanimator. Hope they don't have Farewell, since that card's very backbreaking for a deck looking to put a ton of permanence in play. Possible they're waiting for Reflection of Kiki Jiki to wipe the board. But uh, yeah, we can attack in the meantime and at least make some treasure tokens to set up over the top. Okay, opponent killing Jewel Thief is a good sign. Less likely that there's a sweeper incoming. Play package. Can pay for a conditional counter spell. And we'll pass. So next turn. If our opponent were to tap out Valley plus Stimulus Package is very likely to be lethal since we can make six 1-1s. One opponent lets us untap. Do I want to make any tokens right now? I don't think so. So I can play Valley, and if it resolves I can copy with Reflection. Although if we copy with Reflection they could try and kill it in response. So the timing is pretty delicate. If I can make a lethal valley without using up all my treasures, that would be ideal. So maybe start using Stimulus Package now. And see if our opponent wants to pull the trigger, removing valley. Although, of course, they can wait until I attack with it. So I guess I won't be able to beat instant speed removal and copy another valley. Yeah, I guess I should just try and copy it now then before I sacrifice all my treasures. Okay, that worked. So now we have two lethal threats. Much more likely to work. And I'll attack with all. Make another treasure. And a Wandering Emperor is not going to be good enough, since we have a backup valley. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. Okay. So yeah, I probably should have just copied Valet to begin with before making any 1-1 one -one tokens. So, can't see the second Valet's power, but we've got another treasure incoming here. And that should be more than enough. Still have a briefcase as well, so well over 40 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Jewel Thief into Elder Dragon War to potentially wipe the board. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully we get to over the top our opponent. Going on to Red Black. Make that Grixis. And a Mishra's Research Desk. So, that's an interesting one. Found a Galagreeter's turn too, although it's gonna die to a cut down. Would have been able to kill a Devilish Valley for one mana as well. Although ways to potentially save it from cut down is if you have a stimulus package in play to double its power at instant speed. There's a Harvester. And another Valley. So could play Thief, could play Valet number one. Probably play a Thief. And then Elder Dragon War could still kill Harvester next turn. So ideally they add more creatures to the board that die to it. A research Desk finds Double Swamp. And the uh, Crown can maybe draw if they equip. Harvester. Okay. And they're gonna sacrifice to shrink down Jewel Thief to draw. Not enough to kill it, at least. Okay. And now Fable of the Mirror Breaker looks good. Try and increase our permanent count. 
opponent with their own blood tokens. Also a good way to kind of fight an opposing over the top. It's going to be a rotten reunion to make a zombie. Also increasing their permanent count. I guess decayed zombies have a decent synergy with a crown as well. So that's what they're going for. But at least now the zombie will die. Hoping we can attack with our Shaman token. Not sure how many valleys I'm willing to commit to the board. Well, their opponent's deck doesn't strike me like one that's necessarily playing a ton of sweeper effects. And go for the throat, kills Shaman. Alright, Huntmaster is nice. So, could discard maybe one valley. And then if I draw land, I can play Huntmaster. Could discard double valley, maybe kind of give up on the combo kill with over the top, which is going to be tricky in the face of instant speed removal. And then make it more likely I can play Huntmaster, which also sets up a nice over the top, despite it's potentially getting removed. Right, another over the top. So did not find the uh, lands we were looking for. So we'll hit for three. Could Dragon War to discard a few more cards, since I probably don't need a second over the top. Could briefcase first, but then I'll have to sacrifice it, so that doesn't seem very productive. And then briefcase and over the top can go. Okay, can play land for the turn. And then next turn, maybe play Huntmaster. Also great with uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki to make additional wolves. Opponent looking to maybe flashback the reunion. So I'm fine with the way things are going, I guess. Crown equips Decayed Zombie, hits us for four. Opponent draws. But they're out of zombies for now at least. They did keep the card on top. Not sure what the blue mana is for yet, potentially for counter spells. So that could be a concern. Let's move to combat to see what happens. And go for Huntmaster still. That resolves. Okay. Could see maybe end of turn go for the throat. But next turn we're in a prime position to cast over the top. Although with our opponent at 11, just attacking with everyone could also be enough for lethal. So hopefully we still get to do our thing. I may not have the mana to copy Huntmaster and still cast over the top. But I can maybe copy Jewel Thief to just get one extra permanence and then still cast a 7 mana sorcery. And a soul transfer deals with Huntmaster, Harvester's fine. Okay. So unless they have like a Fading Hope or Voltage Surge, I could get away with copying Jewel Thief before casting over the top. So let's go for it. If they did have removal, I could always reconsider Cast Package and Fable here. But uh, yeah, how many permanents will we have? Six. Opponent also has uh, six permanents here. So possible that I'm shooting myself in the foot a little bit by casting over the top. But it is probably the more fun play than waiting another turn since their opponent may not be alive. So we'll see what happens. Okay. No devilish valley, but we did find a reunion which can give our team haste. Including the Huntmaster. And then I can discard Stimulus Package Fable to maybe still... And our opponent has seen enough. 
All right, sweet. So over the top, capable of killing with a devilish valet, but sometimes bitter reunion giving the team haste is good enough. So while definitely far from a competitive deck, if you're looking for a fun home for this bizarre seven mana sorcery, this might be one of them. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.